My name is Dahit Chitsa, as part of the Lead Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here. Introduce yourself to everybody and, and let us know where you're tuning in from. Well, Vahid, thank you so much for having me on today, man. I really, I, I appreciate it. I hope there's not too much of an echo in here, is there? A little bit, but you're okay. We can serve up. Okay, because I, I could throw some headphones on if need be. But uh, Yeah, go ahead. Try to, if you can put, throw the headphones on, that's good. We'll yeah, wait yeah. Give, give me a sec here, so I apologize. You're all right. You're all right. Cool. I like open area space too, my stuff. Yeah, yeah. Give me one second. All right. Okay, how's that better? That is much better. Let's do it. So All introduce right. yourself one more time and let us know where you're coming in. Absolutely. So my name is Chris Tutella. I'm the owner of Tutella Training Systems, which is a private training facility, a uh, private group training facility, I should say, over here in Clark, New Jersey. Um, I'm a strength and conditioning coach. I've been in the fitness industry for the last 14 years. I started my career when I was 18, um, at, you know, right out of high school. So pretty, it's, it's crazy to say that it's been 14. Time has certainly flown by, but, um, so yeah, I've been in business since 2012 with my own brick and mortar facility. Um, prior to that, I was an independent contractor where I was just running my own business out of a, another private facility, very similar to what I run today. Um, before building up enough clientele, uh, I became a career firefighter for about four years. And then I decided to leave to dive full time into my business uh, back in 2016. Um, so right now I have the gym going. And what I, were I you also... thinking? Switching from that to that? What were you thinking? Did anybody try to stop you? Did anybody call you crazy? Everybody called me crazy. There's, there's probably only about three people. So since I knew that everybody would call me crazy, I really kept it pretty quiet. So once I knew I had my decision made, there was a few people that I knew that I was going to talk to about this that I trusted. And uh, because I didn't want that, that outside opinion of people telling me that I was nuts or that I shouldn't be doing it to uh, rub off on me and influence my decision making. So, but, but with that said, as soon as the decision was made, I got hit from all different angles that I was a maniac, <laughs> you know. So, How did you handle it? I mean, tell us because, because a lot of entrepreneurs, I mean, Dr. Hill talks about it in, in the book, Thinking Gorish, that the majority of people don't become successful because they listen to their loved ones that have good, I don't know if you could call it a good intention, but it's coming from a place of love, but not necessarily from a place of understanding business, you know, per se. Right. But how did you handle that? You know, it, it was a difficult thing. So I can completely understand, you know, when people are, are affected by this. But, you know, it, one, it was not an overnight decision for me. I think a lot of people make that make decision or want to make decisions like that based off of emotion. And it wasn't an emotional decision for me. Training, like I said, I've been doing this since I'm, I'm 18 years old, coaching people. That, that's who I am at, at my core. And um, being a firefighter was great. Um, I'm very grateful for the career. But as soon as I got into it, I knew that, you know, there was more that I wanted to do um, in fitness and strength conditioning. And um, once I decided that, I said, all right, what I'm going to have to do is really build this. And I have to put everything I have right now. So, so this is not just an irrational, oh, my God, I got to quit my job. It wasn't like that. It was more, okay, let me build this. And over four years, that's when I was finally able to say, you know what, I'm, I'm ready to do it. So it, as long as it's not an emotional decision, um, as long as it's something, because I think people take that advice these days and they, they just say, you know, I got to quit my job. I'm going to become an entrepreneur. But what are you really doing that for, right? Like you got to do something because you truly love it. You truly want to, you know, the direction that you want to go. And it's not just based off of, uh, I hate everybody at my job. I'm going to quit and I'm going to run my own business. Well, all right. Well then there, you got a lot more figuring out to do before you can make that decision. Oh, definitely. I, I told people when I, when I made my transition from my previous business into what I do today, it took me two and a half years of being doing it part time to build it up. And it wasn't even built up, but I did go through that phase of two and a half years before you go. So, yeah, you can do this one of the I mean, it's possible, but it's much more um, well planned out if you right. give yourself time and really understand the craft. And all. Now, here's my question for you. Can you not love it and still do it and make a lot of money? 
Uh, I think you could not love it, still do it, and still make a lot of money. I think you can, but I don't think that you're going to feel as fulfilled as if you truly love the work. I think that when you love what you do, you're going to have a sense of purpose and, uh, and a true reason to, to get up and get rolling. Now, some people are motivated by money, and that, that's great. In, in my world, in my opinion, for myself personally, I feel like uh, loving the work is going to give you a lot more than just the dollars. I agree with that 100%. So here's my question. What are, the, what, is, what are the two things that you loved as a firefighter and what were the two things that you didn't like? The two things that I loved about being a firefighter? Yes. Well, you, you know, listen, I, I respect the heck out of what firefighters do, right? So it's a very admirable career, in my opinion. You know, there's a lot of stuff. You, you, you face a lot of dangers. You, you put yourself out there. And you're true. Like, those are the – and look, right now with what's going on in the world, those are people that are, they're true heroes, right? So the fact that I could say that I was a firefighter for a portion of my life, you know, I, I definitely have, I take a lot of pride in that. And I, I respect the hell out of, out of everybody who, you know, in, in careers like that. So that's definitely one thing. And, and, and the other thing would be just, you know, some of the, some of the stuff that you do at the firehouse, some of the, the, the fun things that you do, you know, that camaraderie that you develop as part of that career, as in that career, um, things of, like that, those are things that you look back on and, and you miss a little bit. But, um, I mean, what I do now, this, is, this has been my love, you know, forever. So there's way more than two things uh, that I love about what I do now. One is just being able to coach and connect with people. I mean... For me, being able to coach people on a more deeper and meaningful level, that's one of the most impactful things for me. It's, it's what keeps me going, you know, knowing that maybe I changed this person's life in some way, shape or form. You know, have, I've been able to influence them or impact them. And because of that, it redirected the course of their life. I mean, that's great. You know, now I get the opportunity to do things like this and, and meet new people and network and have these conversations and, and do different, have different platforms, you know, because I, I also run an online coaching program. It's called the Lean SOB Project. So if anybody wants to learn more about that, they can head over to leansobproject.com. But that is just, um, that's, that's a nutrition coaching service that I do online where I could work with people now, not just on their nutrition, but on a deeper level and using different platforms. So that's, that's, what, I'm, that's what fires me up more so. There's always new ideas coming, you know. So here's, here's, here's a question for you. Yeah. A lot of entrepreneurs in the beginning phases of their business, when they're building it, they may not have necessarily enough time or be in the right mindset to take care of themselves health-wise. A lot of them just go, 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 and they don't have the time. And that happens, especially with the areas that I think they're like busy areas, like in LA that I'm in, I see that a lot. That individuals are just like, go, go, go. I mean, they're working. They're, they're, they're trying to build their business future and their future, and they're, they're passionate about it. How important is it for entrepreneurs to take care of their health? What, what oh my are God, some it's... of the recommendations that you could give us that may, it may not take as much as time away or it, it may not feel as much as they're taking away, so they could be doing it. Yeah, that, that, that's a great question. I think not just for entrepreneurs, but for, for everyone, right? The first thing that we need, because it, it's always time, right? And there's only 24 hours in the day, and we all have the same amount of time, but it's what you prioritize. So my question first to anybody listening is, what is important to you? All right, figure out what that goal is for you. If you have a specific goal, you want to lose 10 pounds, you want to lose 50 pounds, what is it, right? And be very specific about it. Now what we need to do is we need to put a deadline on that goal. How long will it take me to achieve that goal, right? Do you want to achieve that in 90 days? You want to achieve that in one year. Be realistic about it, too. Now, the third step is a very important one. Why is it important to you in the first place? A lot of people don't want to do that deep work. They don't want to do that deep dive. People look at fitness as, okay, I have to exercise. I have to eat right. Yeah, those things are part of it. But why is it important to you in the first place? You want to be around longer to see your children grow up. Right. Do you want to be able to protect your family if you had to? If you had to rescue somebody that was falling down across the street, you want to be able to move fast. You don't want to make excuses and because you didn't do the deep work because you said you didn't have time. In my opinion, 
Those are things that people are going to regret. So why is it important to you? Now that we understand those things, we understand what it is you want to accomplish, when you're going to accomplish it by, and why the hell it's important to you, we got to write that down. Those things you have to read out loud every day, just like Think and Grow Rich, what, what, what uh, Napoleon Hill talks about, right? Reading those goals out, out loud every single day so they're in your mind, right? So it's not just about, oh, I'm going to set this New Year's resolution. A lot of times, as you know, that's BS, right? So now that we have that goal, we have this plan in place. All right, so now we have to structure. So look, people are busy. I get that. We're all busy. I'm a business owner. I own two, two different businesses. Um, right now with the pandemic going on, you know, it's, things aren't easy, right? But here's the thing. It's really, you're going to have time for the things that you prioritize. So, hey, look, you don't have an hour a day? Fine. Do you have 20 minutes? Most people have 20 minutes. All right, we could do some pretty significant work in 20 minutes. It's better than nothing. You don't have 20 minutes, 15 minutes. All right. Now, if you're telling me you don't have 15 minutes a day, then somebody's lying, right? <laughs> so, so you're like, why are you building a business if you can't have 15 minutes to yourself? Exactly. Now, right. Now, here's my question. Can it be early in the morning or at nighttime before they sleep? I mean, does the timing in your opinion matter? Like as long as they give you 20, because you can't both, I mean, you can't BS before you sleep. You got 20 minutes. Right. Yeah. Here's the thing. Like when people ask those questions, like if you're looking at a, a, an elite level athlete, if you're looking at something, you want to make their program very specific based on specific things and whatnot, then that's one story. But for the general population, for most of us, and it doesn't, if you want to do it in the morning because that's when you have the most time. You want to do it in the afternoon. You want to do it in the evening. The important thing is that you're doing it. Now, we could split hairs and we could talk about what's ideal, what's optimal, right? But that's a discussion for another day. What's really important is that you get the work done, okay? You got to get the work done. So if you, if you have uh, time in the evening and that's better for you, great. If it's the morning for you, great. Afternoon, lunchtime, awesome. Just get the work in. I, I love it. I mean, you have to put in work. But, but, but you, you mentioned something important, which is writing it down. And I think this falls into the category of writing goals down, which, which is exactly what Napoleon Hill talks about. Here's my other uh, question or suggestion. Whenever you write down the goals, are things that you want or desire. But a lot of times, we're not writing down what we're willing to give up. Mm. in order to get those. Yeah. So maybe people need to give up 20 minutes of watching TV. Maybe they need to give maybe they need to give up 20 minutes of less conference calls. Mm -hmm. It could be 20 minutes less of something else. Right. It could be 20 minutes taking away from your family for your own health. It could be for all of these different reasons, but you got it. it's like I feel like we're trying to squeeze in time where it's already been blocked, you already got it filled up with other things. So you sometimes got to move some stuff out and then put this in there. So it's like, what are you willing to give in order to get that? On my affirmation, I, I wrote it down that I'm going to only work half day, 12 hours a day. I wrote that down. And then I said, I, I'm going to minimize watching TV to 30 minutes. And when I, when I meant TV was just like bullshit, garbage news, all of that stuff, right? My documentaries, my, my knowledge base, my YouTube watching is still on his own routine. He's got his own segment. But then if I want to carve out 30 minutes for exercise, then I need to go down to my list and say, okay, then I need to take 30 minutes away from something else to put this in. Then to me, it's just like an easy shift. That's all it is. But I feel like you, you got to write it down. If you don't write it down, I don't think it, it makes, I don't think it comes true. I, I agree. I, it's like Bruce Lee said, you got to hack away at the, the non-essentials, right? So see, take a look at your day, right? Write down everything that you do throughout the day. And if you, I'm sure that, the, listen, no matter how busy or successful people are, there's always stuff in there that's like, okay, this is just kind of clutter in here. We could remove this and we could replace it with a better habit, right? Because that's the thing. You don't want to just stop a bad habit and just have it as like this empty space now. I think that's why people have trouble, you know, stopping smoking or whatever their bad habits are is because they don't try to replace it with a good habit because they're used to doing something or taking up time of their day because of that thing that they're doing. So if we remove this poor habit and we replace it with 20 minutes of exercise or deep breathing or maybe meal prep for some people that have a tough time with their nutrition, um, whatever it is. And listen, I want everybody to understand that I'm not knocking anybody for the way that they live their lives. 
The point is, if you have a goal to achieve and you want to achieve that, right? If there's something that inside of you tells you, I need to be doing this because you feel, you'll feel better, you, if maybe it's a health issue, whatever's going on in your life, then that's where you need to prioritize, you need to structure, and we can totally work this into your life because every, listen, The Rock is the busy, busiest person on the planet, right? That guy's flying all over the world, filming movies. He brings his gym with him. <laughs> you know, he's fortunate enough to be able to do that. So the point is, you could, there, there's, there is time and you're, you're 100% right, write these things down. What are the things in your day that you can remove? What could you replace them with that are gonna help lead you to your goals? Because look, you're, the outcome of your life, right, is dictated by your daily habits, right? Your daily habits are dictated by your daily actions and your daily thoughts. So it's it just like reverse engineering this, right? If we have, this is the outcome I wanna achieve in 12 months, Okay, what are the actions? What are the steps that I need to take in order to achieve this? And then how do I turn those actions into habits? Well, how do you turn them into habits? You know this, you do it. You and you have to do it consistently. In the beginning, you might have to force yourself to do it, all right? But after you force yourself to do it, then it's, it's all bets are off because once you get past a certain point, then all of a sudden now it's second nature. You don't even have to think about it. You're going to the gym, you're getting that workout in before you even consider watching TV or anything else. In your opinion, how many days does it take from the time that the person decides and it starts building that habit? How many days it takes before it actually becomes a habit where it's part of the routine? Because I hear a lot of numbers and yeah. I frankly don't agree with a lot of those numbers that people come up. Some people say 21 days, 16, 30 but I think it's way beyond that. But what is your personal experience? You know, I don't have a specific number to throw on it, to be completely honest with you, because I have the same like you. I, I've heard these different numbers. I've heard 16 days. I've heard 21 days and all that stuff. And, and look, I think it depends on us as individuals. I think that's what it comes down to. We're all different, right? So I think for some people, they might catch on very quickly and they're very driven and motivated. So once they decide to do something, there's no turning back. And maybe it wasn't, a, maybe it wasn't even a habit yet but they did it so well for, for a month that they said, hey, I feel great, I'm gonna keep going because that's their personality. Some, some other people are slower starters. So you know, a lot of the clients that I work with, the first 30 days, the first 60 days even or more, it's really just, it's a lot of back and forth, it's a lot of coaching, it's a lot of give and take, like, all right, how are you feeling? All right, you didn't have a great week, what else could we do? And that, they're slower starters, so it takes a little bit more time. But then you'll see them that they're, they're three months into something, four months into something, and now it's finally starting to pick up. So I think, to be honest, between me and you, I think it's a little bit of BS when people say that there's a specific time frame, because I think it comes down to the individual. I agree with that. I, I for sure know that it's way more than 30 days because I have tested it myself on my own. Like, yeah. it, it's, you got to do more than 30 days. It, it just, it, it becomes, listen, none of our bad habits came overnight. Right. So why would you want to think that you could replace them overnight? So you mm -hmm. kind of sometimes got to be able to do that. So now let me go back to the other question. The yep. two things that you did not like being a firefighter. The two things that I did not like about being a firefighter. Well, for one, I'm someone who likes to call the shots. <laughs> I like to be my own boss. I think us entrepreneurs, we have that within us for a reason. So it's not that I, I, I don't like, you know, I, I would like to say that I, I was not a person who just disregarded what people told me to do. But sometimes I think for myself, I like to do things with more of a purpose behind it for, for myself, the way I see it. So that's, that's one thing. Um, and then the other thing that I did not like, I think was the fact that, and, and this is, you know, a lot of people who, you know, who, who may work a, a job might, might laugh at me here, but, you know, if I want to take a vacation, I want to be able to take a vacation. I want to be able to travel. I like to work remotely, you know, and still be able to do this and, and have um, passive income coming in. And, you know, uh, if I want to take a trip and, and step away from my gym for a month, I could do that. You know, when I was working for the fire department, I could not do that. And, you know, even if you know the, the schedule for, for, for firefighters, for, for most, um, like we had over here was a 24 hour shift and then 72 hours off. So you get three days off before your next 24 hour shift. So you do get a lot of off time, but even for me, I'm so crazy that I need, I need all the time in the world to be able to do what I want. And, um, you so know, you have and, to stay up for 24 hours. 
Uh, well, you, you definitely rest when you, when you need to rest, but it's, it's, um, it's, you're, you're working. Yeah. You're definitely working. And the calls come in in the middle of the night, you know, if you get uh, calls at 3am or 5am, you know, you might get, you might get a night where you have 10 calls and, and you're, you're running all day, that whole shift, which is those, those are the brutal ones. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah. I mean, just the hours. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand that the benefits might be good, that the pay might be good and all the perks that you get. You know, my wife uh, has a lot of respect for firefighters. I kind of think secretly she checks them out, you know, and everything <laughs> else. But she says she's got a lot of respect for those people. It's all good. So being an entrepreneur, yeah, what has been one of the hardest things that you had to do? Uh, one of the hardest things. Well, well, let's let's start slowly here and, and let's, let's backtrack. So when I opened my gym, right, it was in June of 2012. I got hired in, uh, um, by the fire department in August of 2012. So two months later, right, which was an absolute blessing because I'm a meathead over here in New Jersey that thought, oh, if I train people, they'll start coming. I knew nothing about business. I knew nothing about marketing. I knew nothing about sales. So I learned uh, the hard way that if I don't learn this stuff, if I don't figure this out, then this is not going to last. So the hardest part for me for sure was learning that side of it because training, fitness, this is stuff that's, you know, nutrition. I, I'm, I'm studying this stuff every day of my life. This is what I love to do. I love coaching people. I love reading and studying and, and going to, the, to events and whatnot. But what I did not think I would have to do was learn the whole sales and marketing. And again, I was young and naive. I, I opened my business when I was 25 years old and I kind of just said, oh, well, I'll figure it out, right? Um, so that I would say is probably the hardest thing and then, look, there's, there's a lot of ups and downs uh, with owning your business, right? There's a lot of stress, time management. You know, we were talking about time management earlier. And that's one of the biggest things where I had to really structure my life and structure my day and create a morning routine, create an evening routine, and have specific things that I get done on specific days. You know, I'm old school. I got a planner like this, right? So I still like to, to jot my, my schedule down and things like this. But you can see I have different things that I do, different tasks that I do on different days of the week. So learning how to structure my days, learning how to manage the stress that comes with good days and bad days and good days and bad days when it comes to the business side of things. And then just really learning how to sell. Um, I think especially in fitness, for whatever reason, we have a tough time uh, with the selling component. Um, and I don't know what that is or why. And I'll, I'll tell you, I, I talk to so many different trainers and gym owners that go through the same struggles and, and battles with that. But, um, but once you figure that out, that's what's going to give you the opportunity to help more people. So you have to really dive into that. Otherwise, you're going to be out of business. So that's what I would say the, the most difficult things for me have been. Sounds like someone has gone through some self-development over here. Yeah, that's for sure. It, it, it took a long time. I'm still, they're, they're saying that I'm still clinically insane, but I, uh, I definitely can't have come a long way. <laughs> Listen, I think self-development and all of these skills, I mean, I don't think there's an end to it. I just think that you just polish things up, get better and help different people. And you learn how to scale things up, do things differently. The stuff that I was doing a couple of years ago might be obsolete today. So I need to get myself updated. And that's how it is. And I think that's the kind of uh, the fun part. I mean, it is a stressful at times, but that, that, that's the fun part to go through. If it was the same thing over and over every day and there was no growth in it, I think it just stagnates. And that's why I think a lot of uh, individuals that have their own, like they have a job, it's not that they don't like their job. I think it's just they're stagnating and they're not getting that, the, the stimuli, they're not getting that, you know, juicing up every week or so. They're not getting that. They're not going through all those ups and downs. Obviously, office, politics, all of these different things everybody goes through. But I'm talking about like really elevating and getting yourself to the fulfillment where you feel like you have made impact you know, the impact doesn't have to be big. You don't have to save someone's life. It could just be, you know, making someone's day go better, you know? So yeah. to me, it's like, that's the part that entrepreneurs, they seek that uncomfortable circumstances over a regular comfort, and that gives them the edge. So I love it. Listen, I want to thank you. So so just go ahead and announce that. Um, how, how do people find you? How, how do they get a hold of you if they need to? 
there's a, a bunch of different ways. So I hope you got your, your pen and paper ready. But the one that is right here on Instagram is probably the best place to find me at Chris underscore Tutela, T-U-T-E-L-A. Uh, all types of fitness advice and motivational and nutrition stuff there. You could go to lean sobproject.com if you'd like to work with me online with my online nutrition and lifestyle coaching program you could head over to christutella.com there you will find uh, my old blog posts and now i have a podcast called the iron life podcast that's all there so just go to christutella.com for that if you live over here in new jersey you could go to tutellatraining.com right um because all that stuff is for, for my gym and brick and mortar if you want to work with us is there Facebook, Chris Tutella, Facebook, Tutella Training Systems. I'm everywhere. But if you Google Tutella Training Systems, Chris Tutella, you can certainly find me. But the best way, uh, right here on Instagram, at Chris underscore Tutella, T-U-T-E-L-A. And um, you'll have all the stuff. I I constantly share the content that I put out. And on YouTube, just Google my name, Chris Tutella. Awesome. Chris, thank you so much for taking this time and being with us. Hopefully, we'll get to do more videos with you. I appreciate you taking your time. Hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate you uh, having me on today and it uh, means a lot. And I wish you well and I hope that you stay safe over there. Same here, brother. Talk to you soon. All right, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.